I gave you the definition of price elasticity of demand. When do you think that demand is elastic enough and when do you think that demand is not elastic enough or in other word inelastic that is the opposite of elastic. When we have many substitutes are demand. No, I am not, I am not talking about the factors affecting the price elasticity of demand. I am talking about mathematically. So, what I am saying, let us say I do not have those many products, but here I put little bit force and I am able to stretch. Let us say if I am putting lot of force and I am not able to stretch it or if I am able to stretch it little bit, when can I, what should be the cut off that okay, then in this case it is elastic and in the other case it is not elastic. Vertical, then it Vertical. is not elastic, and horizontal, then it is elastic. Okay, you are ahead of you know where we are in the class right now. But how about just to continue with your thought? How about when it has some slope? Mathematical number. So mathematical number. How do we get the number? Uh, if it is less than one. So one. So how do you know? My point is not that I am going to describe in a minute that why we take one as that number. Why not 2? Why not 3? Sir, because if we apply a force like you gave an example and huh. it stretches the same huh. like the rubber, that means it is responding 100 percent with the, it is 100 percent in uh, inversely proportional with the price. Okay. So, we take 1 as, uh, as it. Okay. Mm. Good. So, what you are saying is that if there is a 25 percent change in price and if we get at least 25 percent change in quantity, then we call it elastic. It means what we are saying is the price elasticity of demand is at least equal to 1 and mind you we are using the minus sign in the definition. Okay? And when we put 25 percent change in the price and we observe less than 25 percent change in the quantity demanded, then we have inelastic demand. So, 1 is that cutoff point, 1 comes out as a natural num number, but also there is a reason. Let us look at it. Let us look at the total revenue and what is total revenue? Price multiplied by quantity. It is the revenue earned by a seller. If he sells a particular quantity at particular price. So, total revenue is P Q and now I am going to use calculus little bit to describe because we already talked about in word why we are doing it, but here using calculus we will do it more precisely. Now, let us say that the cutoff would come from here. If P goes up, if seller has increased its price okay, and P Q also goes up. Then do you call this product elastic or inelastic? Inelastic. inelastic. And when P Q has come down, elastic. why? It involves certain bit of logic. Let us look at it. P has gone up and what is the effect of P on Q? Q decreases. Q, Q decreases. P goes up, Q decreases. So, if P goes up by little bit and Q does not decrease as much as the P has decreased, then what is the impact on total revenue? Total revenue would go up, but that is the case when P goes up by 25 percent and Q goes up by less than 25 percent, that is the case of inelasticity. So, this is what we get here inelastic. And when P goes up, Q comes down, but overall impact on revenue is that total revenue comes down. It means it is elastic. Why it is elastic? Again, P go has gone up, if I continue with the same example, P has gone up by 25 percent and Q has gone up by more than 25 percent. What would be the end result? It will decrease. P Q will decrease. That is why it is elastic, not because P Q has decreased, but because Q has decreased more, Q has decreased more with respect to 
increase with proportional increase in p that's why it is elastic now let's look at it in the calcul using calculus let's denote total revenue by tr don't understand calculus you can skip it total revenue is p multiplied by q now let's look at it what happens to the total revenue if we change p and how can we get that change using differentiation partial differentiation of this expression both side of this expression with respect to p so what we get and this will be equal to q plus p dq by del q by del p first we are keeping q fixed and differentiating with respect to p so when you differentiate p with respect to p you get 1 so 1 multiplied by q q now we are keeping p fixed and differentiating q with respect to p what we get del q by del p so if you take q common 1 plus p divided by q and what the definition we put minus sign so what is this this is equal to 1 minus epsilon by the way i forgot to mention although i have been using it that epsilon is uh, the elasticity is denoted by epsilon so now let's look at it if epsilon is greater than 1 if epsilon is greater than 1 sorry not 0 what happens p goes up total revenue goes up no total revenue goes down sorry total revenue goes down so in this case we have already discussed this is elastic and when epsilon is less than 1 p goes up total revenue goes up in elastic and we should also discuss a case when epsilon is equal to 1 this is called unit elastic p goes up t r remains the same unit elastic now let us look at it the demand function that we discussed q is equal to 10 minus p example we are talking about q is equal to 10 minus p can you tell me that this demand function is elastic or inelastic it is unit elastic someone is saying it is unit elastic why do not you draw so two three ways now we have to look at it okay one way to look at it if we use the definition what is the definition of elasticity p by q delta q by delta p earlier we were using x in place of q it does not matter okay this is just a variable and delta q by delta p what is this I will give you through this example I will give you one more method what is this delta q by delta p for this not ex, not just minus 1 for this it is minus 1 but in general what is this delta q by delta p it is inverse of the slope it is inverse of the slope so also it can be written here that elasticity can be given as 1 divided by slope so now how much is the slope minus 1 okay it is minus 1 and p divided by how much is q 10 minus p or in other word we can write 10 by p minus 1 is it true so when p is equal to 0 when p is equal to 0 
what do we get? P is equal to 0, when put here P is equal to 0, what do we you get in the denominator? When P is equal to, let us write it here in detail, P is equal to 0, it implies 10 by P is infinity, it implies 10 by P minus 1 is tending to infinity. So, what is happening here? This is tending to 0. So, here at this point, what is? It is inelastic. Fine? How about here? At this point? 0. Elastic 1. It is? At this point, what do we have? Q is equal to 0. So, P by Q is tending to infinity. So, P by Q multiplied by 1 by slope is also tending to infinity. So, here it is elastic. Okay? So, similarly, if you continue with this thought, at some place in the middle, you will get where elasticity is equal to 1, because it starts with inelastic and becomes elastic. And somewhere you will get unit elastic. What is that point? Can you tell me? Where? Now, we know we are trying to find a point where elasticity is unit elastic. It means that epsilon is equal to 1 and this should be equal to minus p by 10 minus p multiplied by minus 1 or in other word p should be equal to 10 minus p. So, p should be equal to 5. Okay? This is the one way we have used to calculate. We have also have another way to calculate it. How can we do it? Here we have the same line, here we have p, here we have q. On the same scale, here we can draw q on the x axis and total revenue on the y axis. When q is equal to 0, how much is the total revenue? 0. zero. And when at this point, when q is e p is equal to 0, how much is the total revenue? When p is equal to 0, 0, total revenue is 0. What is the total revenue? p multiplied by q. So, one of these two is 0, then the whole thing would be equal to 0. So, total revenue is equal to 0. So, at this point it is 0, at this point this is equal to 0. How about in the middle? P q or in other word, what we are saying, because on we are disc we are writing with respect to q. So, p is equal to 10 minus q and this is if you use little bit of algebra, if you do not know the algebra, then create a table and try to draw it. But if you know the algebra, this is an equation of it is equation of quadratic type. Okay? So, what will you get? It will. It is also an equation of, if you use coordinate geometry, then this is an equation of parabola. You do not need this much of information to draw. I am just saying in case you know, you can also identify. The simple way to draw it is that you start, you make a table, q is equal to 0, q is equal to 1, 2, 3 and draw. More point you take, better your drawing will be. But another way to draw is to understand that this is a quadratic equation or this is also an equation of parabola and then it would be much simpler. It is going to look like this. Okay? Here you have 5, here you have 5. Okay? 
So, what is happening in this zone? In this zone, from 0 to 5 quantity, you increase the quantity. Let us let me erase this. Simple thing that you should look at it that 0 to 5 range for quantity q is going up, it means p is coming down. Anyway, look at it here in this zone. If you move in this direction, p is moving in the downward direction. So, q is going up, p is coming down and what is happening to T r? T r is going up, T r is going up. So, if you look at this that price is going down or T r is going up. Similarly, just to understand you move from 5 to 0 direction, what is happening? Q is decreasing, P is increasing and T r is decreasing. So, simply P goes up, T r is coming down. It simply means that it is elastic zone. So, this zone is elastic zone. How about at 5? Little bit of change because here it is flat or in other word this total revenue is maximized at this point. So, little bit of change in price will not bring any change in the total revenue. So, here Q goes up or down while P remains the same, T R remains the same. So, unit elastic. So, at this point it is unit elastic. Fine. Now, in this zone what is happening? Just reverse of this and here you get simply what is happening? P is going up and T r is also going up or when P r is coming down, T r is also coming down. So, here it is clearly inelastic. So, in the zone where price and total revenue move in the same direction, then what do we get? Inelastic zone. When price and total revenue move in the opposite direction, we get elastic zone. 